by tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video of open source good or bust, we're going to be addressing actually a request that I received via email. So we're going to be talking about something named Trinity Core. And the request that I got in the email said, Hello Tech by Tips, I really appreciate your videos and I just sent a donation. Thank you very much for that donation. It was a very significant donation and it really helps the channel. And he says, uh, would you please make a video on the Trinity Core WoW emulator? Specifically, how to compile it and set it up on Linux. I don't want to rely on repacks. Most of the guides online are based on Windows servers and I can't find anything on how to do it for Linux. I believe that running it in Linux might be better when it comes to the use of the hardware. Thanks in advance, Mr. X. So Mr. X, let's go ahead and address your request. Once again, thank you very much for the donation. And we're going to be talking about Trinity Core. First of all, what Trinity Core is, it's uh, open source. And here's their website where they have information about the Trinity Core MMO project. So MMO is Massive Multiplayer Online. And it says that it's a MMORPG framework that is written in C++ mostly. So that's a uh, Massive Multiplayer Online RPG. And it says that it's derived from Mangos, the Massive Network Game Object Server. That's what it means. And it's based on the code of that project with extensive changes over time to optimize, improve cleanup, the code base, and at the same time improve the in-game mechanics and functionality. It says it's open source and it has a good community that they encourage to get involved with it. And they have a GitHub repository and they have the project website, which is where uh, trinitycore.org. So it's this one. And you can get a bunch of information here about the commits. They have two main branches based on what I can see. The master branch and the 335. And they have a Discord here for people to join and talk. And they have a forum and a bunch of other stuff. Instructions on how to compile, etc. So it seems like this followed by the community. And uh, if we can see, it says it's based on mangoes. And if we search for mangoes, they have a website that is called getmangoes.eu. And it gives you basically this, which is the home of the mangoes and the community. And it says that it's uh, basically a server that is compatible with all non-current releases of World of Warcraft. So it, it seems to be a server implementation for old World of Warcraft. Being a World of Warcraft player myself, I played this game for a while, several years ago, and uh, it, it, there's a lot of versions. It's constantly updated by Blizzard. They constantly in, uh, provide new expansions, but it seems to me like uh, this is focused on the vanilla experience, which is the first version of Warcraft that came out, and they have some kind of server, and in that server, then you can play the game, and that's if, if you're familiar with it, back in, I think it was 2009, an employee from uh, Blizzard, I think it was, or maybe they got hacked. They got access to the source code of the World of Warcraft game, and that included the server and all that. And then these private servers for World of Warcraft started kind of popping up everywhere. And Blizzard went after them really hard, especially if they were like using the, the code that was leaked from Blizzard and getting a lot of them taken down. So the community started to develop their own version of the server so that they would not be legally liable for using what was legally the property of Blizzard to run the servers. And it seems like this was like probably the OG of the servers. And as you can see, they have several versions of it. The Trinity package is working on top of what Mangos did. I was looking at what Trinity Core was in YouTube, trying to kind of get an idea of what this provides and like the request said most of the guides that i found were for windows how to set it up in windows how to com uh, compile it for windows and actually they have like examples of people actually playing using the private server and i was 
really amazed at how at how good it goes. It feels like you're playing actually on the Blizzard servers based on what I can see on the YouTube videos. So I understand why this request came and I understand the point of it, right? From from my point of view, this for the average user it's definitely very complicated to set up unless they rely on what I found are named repacks which is already compiled and, and prepared for you to run it. But obviously you don't want to rely on repacks like the person said in the email because you don't know what they put in a repack. They could have a virus or keyloggers or something. So it's, you know, security wise, especially if you're, if you're going to be running this on your desktop computer where you have all your information, you would not like to be running stuff that other people compiled and package and you don't know what's in there. So that kind of makes sense too. We can also discuss about other variants and how this has developed because it looks like right now the main options that you have to run a Warcraft server are either Mangos or another server that is called Azeroth Core and Trinity Core. Those are like the main ones that pre people seem to be using right now. But there were other options before. For example, Lighthope was an option that was like eight years ago but as you can see the repository was taken down due to a copyright request from blizzard so if you go into the request it, it says why they requested that and it says basically that the they have a table in their server that is exactly what they used in blizzard so they basically use a, a copy paste of the leaked databases from Blizzard and that's why they got taken down. And then there was another option that was the Elysium server which is from seven years ago according to GitHub. You know, it's been seven years so I highly doubt that there's gonna be any anybody working on this anymore. I don't see any information about anyone doing anything with this right and the this is also for vanilla Warcraft so it doesn't include any expansions or anything like that. So we've covered those two that are basically dead, they're old. Now we have Azeroth Core, which based on what I can find online is also very good, but tends to be kind of old, on the older expansion packs, like the Burning Crusade, the Wrath of the Lich King, and others along those times, the Cataclysm. But I haven't seen like a lot of information on Azeroth Core running the newest expansion. So then Trinity Core, the main difference, right, that I'd see, it's like they do have a lot of contributors. There's a big community of people that are working on this project. You can see 536 people. And they're constantly releasing all the, the information that you need and the source code for you to have it working with a bunch of different versions of Warcraft. If you see here in the About, it says that they have a version master which works which is version 10.2.7 right now and that based on what I saw you could use it to run basically any of the newer expansions now they also have 335 which is the latest that was released faithfully that people say that is like the best running version of a private server that you can have which is based on the leaks from from Blizzard and I believe that's Wrath of the Lich King they also have the Wrath of the Lich King Classic, which is version 3.43. And they have Cataclysm Classic, which is 4.40. So they have a bunch of different versions. If you, if you go here on the branches, you can see that they have the Master, which is the latest. They have the 3.35, which is the stable one for Wrath of the Lich King. They have the Cataclysm Classic and Wrath of the Lich King Classic. So they have a lot of branches for this and a lot of people are working on them and it seems to be pretty stable from what I can see online. They have good documentation. If you need to build it, you can go into the Trinity Core Info website and here they have everything that you need. If you want to compile for Linux, like is the case that was requested, you can get it here and they have for Debian, Fedora, Red Hat and Arch Linux. The Debian applies to any Debian base, for example, for Debian or Ubuntu or Raspbian, it works the same. They also have it for Mac OS. If you want to run this on a Mac, you, you can certainly do that. They give you all the instructions and in Windows, which is the basic that most of the people are using, they have all the full instructions here to do that. It's well documented, it's really good. It even goes into the details of how do you install the server, how do you set it up, 
how you make that server accessible outside if you want to make it semi-public you know to play with friends that are not in the same network you can also do that and I mean it's the documentation is very very good even if you're not a technical person and it's gonna definitely be hard for you you need to have a lot of patience to follow the guide and, and make sure everything works but it is well documented and anyone honestly could do it so that's a plus right there yeah I mean I could say based on what I can see on what is available online all the many examples of people using this playing on it and seeing how well it plays the ability of it to handle a bunch of different expansions and the fact that you can run it on a bunch of different operating systems to me i think this is a good one i would give it a thumbs up it just you, you have to be aware that it's better if you're technical if you know how to do these things how to manage servers how to write in the command line but if you're not you just have to be a, a very patient follow the guideline very carefully and everything should be okay so i would say yes this is a good open source server that is available right now for free on github and i would definitely go ahead and create another video where i'm gonna go and explain how do you set it up properly using this guide for linux so that's gonna be it for this video if you like it hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so remember leave your comments in the comment section below talk about anything that you want me to cover or any questions that you might have on the videos or things that you want to let me know and uh, also remember i do not monetize this channel so i rely entirely on your contributions for me to focus on this channel and create good quality content for you so if you want to help me go into the link in the description below you can donate through paypal or through bitcoin and i'll really appreciate it that's gonna be it for this one i'll see you in the next one take care